thank you, thank you, thank you. Niao Ma, it is amazing how much influence this little tea leaf has had on my life. Some of my most memorable meals and most amazing adventures have been because of this little guy. Today, I'm gonna make an elegant meal that will go with any cup of tea. But first, let's make this very healthy edamame appetizer, okay? How many of you know what edamame is? Edamame is actually the Japanese name for soybeans. I'm gonna show you how easy. You, nowadays, you go to a lot of restaurants, including my restaurant. I have a couple of restaurants that we always serve this because you know why? People like to have light and healthy meals, and that start with the appetizer. I'm gonna pick this up in my fridge. You should always, always have some of these around. You can freeze them for several months, and you can buy them fresh. And this is basically soybean. In many parts of the world, like Australia, US, and Canada, or a lot of soybean. So all you have to do is cut this open, and all of these are edamame inside. Most of the time, these are already partially cooked. So all you have to do is heat it up and warm it up in a pot of boiling water. But just not the regular boiling water. You see, put them all in. Mmm. Oh, might as well because it's so healthy. Let's offer everybody healthy food, okay? All you have to do is warm it up because it's already cooked. Now, to make it nice and wonderful, you know what you can do? Add a tiny bit of salt when you cook this, okay? And you can even use a tiny bit of five spice powder when you cook this. And you know what? You can use a tiny bit of star anise. Basically, you're flavoring this when you're warming this up, and that's important, okay? Oh, this is salted, and this is very, very good. You look at this. This is so easy to do. You know, I am going to some of these are already ready to do. I want to show you how easy it is to eat this edamame, okay? All you have to do is you pick up one of these, which is already uh, nice and ready, and you pop this out like this. Pop this out, pop this out, and then you go. Mmm, healthy food, huh? Then you mix the seasoning. Very, very easy. Here, you have some seasoning here. Salt, five spice powder mixed with the seasoning. Or you can also use the store bought. This is all kind of seasoning. Lemon pepper. I also use a tiny bit of lemon pepper right here and add this together. Just this is good enough. Very Chinese. But how many of you like lemon pepper? Everybody? Okay, we add lemon pepper. So this way, we will sprinkle this right over here. Oh, look at this. This is how you serve. Very easy. We set it aside. When you open this, this is the Soybean inside, this is how big it is. You toss the whole thing, okay, in this bowl. I'm gonna show you how easy it is. You can do it like this. This is already warm. You don't want to do it too much, okay? Just enough liquid. You put it over here, and you put it over here. Look, I'll show you how wonderful. And then the seasoning is right here. You just go toss. Ah, look at this. Toss, 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 and then we're going to bring a few of these, put it over here, a few of this over here, and I am going to serve to you, pass it around, and also serve it over there. You know, cook it quick, cook it easy. Next, we'll travel to a place that has inspired some of today's dishes. I have some hot water here, exactly 96 degrees. I'm gonna show you how to rehydrate or relieve or soak the tea leaf to make sure they open up, okay? And the interesting thing about tea is, good tea come from different forms. One sometimes tea bags, sometimes tea leaves. Look at this. This is a jasmine tea in tea leaf. This little oval, like a football, oval jasmine tea pearl. This is the round pearl. This is the giant pearl. Look at this, it looks like this, how cute. When you open this up, it looks like this. Look at that, isn't that amazing? Because I'm gonna use tea for our next dish. That's why I want to use all this tea and introduce you, because I'm gonna use these tea to make a dish called poached halibut. 
over soba noodles. Look at this. Ah, let it soak for a little while, let it cool down, and then they become tea leaves when they are ready, okay? In the meantime, I'm gonna get some soba noodle ready. Now, if you are home cook, you rush around, sometimes you get confused, but don't confuse food and non-food. This is soba noodle, okay? And this looks like soba noodle, but not soba noodle. This is incense for my kitchen god right there. This is Ding Fu Zhou Guan, okay? And I'm gonna put this soba noodle. Ah, this is made from buckwheat. I put this right over here, and I pick this, and I remove these, and I put it right over here, and I remove this, I put it right over here, and I let it boil for a little while. Tea has also been the basis for some great relationships over the years. When I continue my poached halibut, Let's meet one of my oldest buddies. I'm way on top of the Dongding Mountain in Taiwan. Let me introduce you to a dear friend, one of my cousins, Mr. T, the mascot and official host of the Taiwan Tea Festival. Here, he introduces us to the fine art of tea drinking. We are not only drinking buddies, but he also my tea consultant. Every year, Mr. T comes down from the mountain to make an appearance in the city of Pinglin, home of the tea festival and the world famous tea museum. If history is your cup of tea, this is the place for you. It has room after room of beautifully designed exhibits about tea. From its ancient roots to its modern role as the world's most consumed beverages, you can learn about everything from production to packaging to brewing. There, I heard about the beautiful teapots created by two of Taiwan's leading ceramic designers, Mr. and Mrs. Lee, and decided to go meet them at their workshop in Yingge. Of course, we started out by sitting down at the tea table together. They're going to show us how to do the traditional way to brew a cup of tea. First, you warm up the teapot, just the outside. And then you put the tea into it. Beautiful tea leaves, whole tea leaf. And then you pour into the teapot. The first brew is not really a brew, but just to warm up the teacup, release the tea leaf, rehydrate the tea leaf, and you see the water comes out, he can, she controls, stop, see? You stop, open, stop, open, ha, ah, look at that, you see? Then you pull the first brew, now this is the first brew, into this tea pitcher. The tea pitcher is important because you put the tea into this tea pitcher, so every single cup will have the same concentration, the same strength. You put the tea into the cup, then you smell it. Oh, smells amazingly good. First sip is to taste, to appreciate. Each sip is better than the earlier. Mr. and Mrs. Lee are not only wonderful hosts, they're also responsible for designing and making these gorgeous teapots. This is a very unique design. It looks like a traditional teapot, but it's not. Here is the lid. And inside here, when you lift this up, this is like a colander. You can hold the tea leaf here. Close, open. This is the traditional, you just pull it out. Or you can do it like this. You see this? Continue to go down, see that? Ah, that's why I call it innovation. And I like that. I have difficulty trying to choose the right color, the right design. So I decided to buy all three of them. So I can show it to you. And I want to thank Mr. Lee and Mrs. Lee. After Mr. Lee designed the teapot, oh, the mold is cast. Look at this mold, the different component of the mold. Traditionally, potters would form the clay into a teapot, either freehand or on a potter view. At Taofang, wet clay is actually dripped into the mold. So by doing the wet clay into the mold, it gives that really, really precise control and uniform pieces every time. This is what you call quality control. After it's two hours, after it's formed, then you open the mold 
and you can see. Whoa, it's already formed. Look how beautiful this is. Now you drill the hole in the bottom of the teapot. See the hole right here. Keep pushing, keep pushing. Put the handle right on top. Fire it for six to seven hours. Very hot. Mm. After six to seven hours. Ah. Oh. Traditional art combined with modern technology. That's what you have. A masterpiece. Ah, thank you, Wang Zhuo. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, brother. Mr. T came all the way from Taiwan to visit me. Whoa, thank you. Mmm, beautiful cup of tea. You remember, I was talking about the pearl, the jasmine pearl. This is how they do it. They put the tea leaf in their palm, okay? And then they put the hand right over here, and they roll it and roll it and roll it and roll it until they're pearl. And that's why they're more expensive, because they're more labor intensive. They seal in the flavor. And when you Rehydrate them. When you soak them, they all open up. Smells wonderful. I'm going to use one of these for my dish. I'm going to do this wonderful poached halibut over soba noodle. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is get this water boiling, and get ready boiling. Why am this is boiling? I'm going to get the soba noodle and beautiful soba noodle, and I drain them. Whoa! Look at this. Really nice. Drained it. Drained it. Mmm, soba noodle, beautiful soba noodle. Let it sit aside, and then we're gonna do the fish. Okay, the first thing we do is get the halibut from our refrigerator. Okay, you can use any fish. You can use trout. You can use uh, sea bass. You can use red snapper. You can use anything. Okay, the most important thing is get the right thing together. First, we want to flavor our ingredient first. You put this together and put a tiny bit of tea. I want to use tea to flavor it. Okay, let's put this over here and then some green onion. And I put this and I press the green onion a little bit and release the flavor. Ah, uh, how about some ginger? I put some ginger and I put this. I press this a little bit and I press a little bit and I put it right over here. And then, oh, ah, lime juice. Then you can put the whole thing. Right over there, and also a few slices like this, a few slices of this, and put them right here. So very flavorful. And then you cut the fish. Bring this to a boil, okay? Make sure you bring this to a boil. In the meantime, we we'll cut this in half. Let's remove these and cut this at an angle like this, and put it right over here. And cut this at an angle like this, and I put it right over here. And then I lay this. Over here and let it poach, okay? Let it poach means you're not boiling it too much. You just basically cook it, okay? And then after that, you put a tiny bit of pepper, ah, tiny bit of pepper, tiny bit of salt, and then also if you want to make it really flavorful, ah, how about poach it with a tiny bit of soy? Ah, this is very very Asian. Ah, how many of you like wine? Chill. In Chinese, it's called all the alcohol. Where does Twelve percent, fourteen percent, or eighty proof. They call chiu. Say chiu. In Chinese, Canton is called zhao. Zhao wine, and I put it right over here. Okay, this is just enough. This is more than enough. And you know what? Since all of you like chiu, why don't we put the whole thing in there? Okay, and then we will turn it down very, very low, very, very low. Okay, and poach it. Very very low. Oh, let us poach it. In the meantime, I'm gonna get some sesame seed and toast it. And for my next toasted sesame seed green, okay. Here, make sure you always have a well-stocked pantry. Brown sugar, star anise, ah,、uh, um, tangerine peel, and wood ear mushroom. All of these. Ah, look at that. Here, I have some black sesame seed. Look at this. Black sesame seed 
and white sesame seed. Very good for toasting. And also, why you toast the sesame seed? The reason why you toast sesame seed is because you enhance, bring the nutty flavor from the sesame seed out. Okay, I put this in, and I also put this in, I mix it. Okay, and I toss this, and I toss this, and I pass this around. You can take a look, the difference between white sesame seed and toss. And in fact, this can be put in a pantry for up to six months, up to 12 months. This is cool. Okay, pass and take, take a look. And then, a lot of times, the Chinese also use this to make sesame seed oil. Okay, but you got to toast it. In the meantime, look at how beautiful this is. Oh, look at that. We are toasting this. And we are checking our fish. Make sure our fish is nice and oh, smells good. Let me taste my poaching liquid and make sure it tastes very good, okay? I think it needs a tiny bit of soy. And that's why you have to taste it, okay? Why we're poaching this? We're gonna do some green. Now I have some mustard green. Gai choy. Everybody say gai choy. Yeah, guys, mustard green. And then all I'm doing is I trim this a little bit. I trim this a little bit. I trim this a little bit. I save these and I give them extra flavor. And I put this, this is spinach. That means you can use any leafy vegetable. You can even use a uh, mustard green, a uh, choy sum, gai lan, a uh, 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 yin choy, all kind of choy. Choy means vegetable, okay? And I'm gonna cut this up, cut this up, give flavor and texture. This is gai choy, and this is spinach. So we have both of these, and my sesame seed is being toasted, my vegetables are already cut up, and we're ready. In the meantime, we're going to finish up the greens and the halibut. Oh, I think my sesame seed is ready. So we shut it off and use it for a number of things. You can pre-do this. Do it ahead of time and keep it in a container, okay? In the meantime, I'm gonna heat this up. Give it nutty flavor. Toast sesame seed with the green. Now, we're gonna check it out. Oh, the fish is almost ready. And we'll start with the green, okay? First, you put a tiny, tiny bit of oil, okay? And a tiny bit of ginger. I want ginger, minced ginger. <laughs> Minced ginger, put it all together. And I put all the ginger right here, and then put all the green. You can use any leafy green, okay? Make sure they are, oh, put all the green right here, okay? I mix spinach and mustard green together. And this is a great cooking utensil. You let it cook for a little while, and then you can save the cooking time by putting a tiny bit of broth and cover this up like this, okay? In the meantime, let's get the fish ready. Mmm, poaching the fish. I'm gonna remove the fish. Beautiful, one piece. Oh, nice. I can smell the tea leaf is still around, okay? Really nice. Look at this, this is absolutely wonderful. And then, I'm gonna remove the solid because the flavor already come out. I don't need this anymore. So, we will remove all of these liquid. Uh, this solid right here, okay? And then we don't need them. And then we slightly thicken this up because we're gonna use this for our soba noodle. Oh, you see this? I'm gonna turn it up high. Okay. Stir this when you put it in. Make sure one portion to one portion because there's a lot of liquid here. Otherwise it takes forever, okay? Mmm, this is gonna be good. Just the right amount of sauce, okay? Very good. This is really nice. Mmm. This is it. And then we're gonna put all these soba noodle right here. Now you know what? I want to save a tiny bit of these because I don't want to use them all up. Because I want to use some of these for the fish. Okay? Taste a little bit. Perfect. Poach halibut over soba noodle. Then you put this. Wow, look at this. We put this all together. Ah, look at that, huh? And then we'll get this noodle out. Look at this. You shut it off. Put the noodle right over here. 
beautiful noodle. Whoa, look at this. This is amazing. Okay, and then I have a tiny bit of this sesame seed and sprinkle this a little bit. Okay, put this over here. Put a piece of fish, put a piece of fish, put a piece of fish right here. Put green onion. Look at this beautiful fish right here. And then I, whoa, put a tiny bit of vinegar, tiny bit of salt, and sesame seed oil. You know what? The whole thing is right here. Sesame seed. Ah, look at this. You know what? If Yan can cook these tasty tea dishes quick and easy, so can you. Jai Jian.